learn to improve conversions and generate more leads with the video podcast at marketingoptimization.tv. Hi, and welcome to Marketing Optimization with Alex Designs. I'm your host, Alex Harris, and today we're talking with Eric Lunches. How you doing, Eric? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me on the show. Really excited to be here. Thanks for being here. You're from the website pandabreakthrough.com, and I want to bring you on to talk some advanced SEO and give people some practical advice really to you know, get set up for the rest of the year, but overall, SEO is just the foundation of everything. To get started, what could an e-commerce site do today to really improve their rankings in the next 90 days? Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. First of all, like I think SEO is really the foundation of you know, it could be the foundation of a lot of businesses. It really gives you a lot of ROI. So if you put a bit of bit in now, you get a lot for later. And let's say we want to do something for 90 days. The best thing you want to do is you want to concentrate on what you're lacking. And most of the time for e-commerce specifically, um, you want to concentrate on a lot of the on-page, so a lot of the items. So for instance, let's say you're selling fishing poles. You have like a fishing pole that's called the Base Hunter 4000 or something. And you only have like one little description, you have like two lines, you have like a crappy picture. And when Google sees your page, your products, they're not going to give you a lot of love. They're not going to rank you very high. So a lot of times, if you want to really like kind of reinvent your store, one of the ways is to kind of go through your items again and add more content, add more images. And that will naturally rise you up the ranks because Google's like Google's objective in life is really to show the best result for what they're searching. Uh, the query they have. So if someone's looking for a fishing pole, they want to show the best result for that, so the most complete one. So that's that's thing number one. Thing number two is obviously links. And in the next 90 days, if you could go out and be involved in your community, really uh, get some links from the community. So a link from like, I guess, uh, blogs that in your industry, this, you could have sales, you get coupon and give coupon codes. Really, it's all about communicating with you in your industry and getting links back from your industry. So kind of like in a general nutshell, that's going to be the like the two major things of focus if you want to really increase your rankings. And I'm sure we'll go more in depth as we kind of like go along in this whole thing. I'll be sharing you all. I'll be sharing a lot of secrets and chips and stuff that are just to help you out there. Yeah, I'm excited about that because so, this is this is stuff I, I live every day, and it can be applied not only to to e-commerce but really any type of website out there. The same the same thing really applies those uh, the, the 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 fundamentals at least. Mm-hmm. Now I know a lot of sites have really gone through some pain in the last couple of years. You know, experiencing those traffic drops from from Panda and Penguin. Can you first talk about maybe how you can determine uh, you, what the cause of that traffic was and then maybe some next steps to really set you up for improvement? Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. Like Pan and Penguin, just for those that don't know, they're the code names for Google penalties. Google was, you know, came around and there's a lot of people doing SEO and they were trying to like almost cheating or pushing the boundaries or just really they were getting results that weren't supposed to be ranking that were ranking because of all this SEO practice. And Google's answer has been Panda and Penguin. It's the, kind of like the way to kind of equalize a field. Now, unfortunately, a lot of like legitimate people have been caught up in a loop, and I'm really here to help those guys. I'm here to help people that have, you know, been affected by Panda and Penguin. And they're two completely different penalties. And here's how you figure out which ones, you know, kind of affecting you if you've suffered a traffic drop. So, first thing you do is you load up Google Analytics. That's kind of like if you have a traffic drop, you go check that out, and it depends on how your traffic drop looks. So for instance, if you have a slow gradual decline, so over the course of a month or so, or even six months, you just notice that your traffic's kind of going down slowly, sometimes ups and downs. That's usually an indication of Panda and also other updates that Google has done. So usually that is going to be more the quality, and sometimes you've been losing links and you need to replenish them. So that's, that's the gradual declines. Sometimes, um, you're also going to see a more severe drop, but kind of like a, a slope, and that's sometimes when Google releases a Panda update. The other one is going to be Penguin. So all that we, we, everything we've just talked about is Panda. The other one is Penguin, and Penguin usually is a very sharp drop. So if in one day or two days you just get you're getting traffic and then you get a sharp drop off into a single page. So for instance, let's say your homepage you're ranking for 
uh, best fishing poles. And then the next day, like from day one to day two, you're nowhere near to be found and you got a sharp drop, that's penguin. So they have two different, it's important to know which one you're affected by because they have two different ways of recovery, two different methods of recovery. In the same way, you know, you won't treat an illness the same way. You got to, yeah, there's different solutions for both of them. So it's good to know. And last but certainly not least, for Penguin especially, you want to go into Google Webmaster Tools. So it's google.com slash webmasters. And inside, there's you go on the left-hand side. It's called um, Search Traffic. And then you click on Manual Action. So if Google's actually come in and said that you're, you're penalized for uh, Penguin or if you even have a manual penalty, which are, could be really bad, they'll be listed there. So that's one way. That's the first thing you want to check after you've checked the Google Analytics graphs is to see in your webmaster tools, hey, do I have a penalty? Do I not? Um, if you have a severe ranking problem, usually it'll be there. Yeah. Well, now I want to ask you some specific questions to e-commerce because I know that, especially with big com big sites, you have a, t a ton of SKUs. And a lot of times, the sites try to rank for too many keywords per page. <laughs> and then you have this this cluster of all these, and you, you don't really know where to kind of start. And it can create duplicate content, duplicate titles. What, what would be some of, some of those, those most common mistakes that e-commerce sites make? All right. Well... That's, that's going to be something I encounter a lot, right? You get in, it's a one-man operation, he's selling 1,200 products. And you're like, well, how, you know, you have to, as an e-commerce store, you have to be able to um, have a ratio of people to what you're selling. So for instance, if you're selling, if you want to sell 1,500 products, you need a, a team, right, to be able to manage those products. My, usually when I come in, I just say, I say, look, if, if you, if it's, if it's not worth writing the description and it's not worth creating a, a decent product page for every single item, then it's you probably shouldn't be listing it in the first place. And that's kind of like a hard, like tough love answer. But there are cheap ways of hiring teams and getting all that. So what it what I'm basically alluding to and coming to is that when you have too many items, you need to have you need to be have be able to have quality. In every single item. So the biggest mistake I see uh, e-commerce people do is that they get a catalog full of stuff. They just copy paste the manufacturer's descriptions. They use the manufacturer's pictures. So when Google crawls your site, they're looking for the original content. Google is going to determine like who has the most original content, and then they're going to rank them on the top. So when you use the manufacturer's descriptions and the manufacturer's pictures, and you only have like one or two lines, Google comes and sees your site and your page and just says, well, nothing original here, so we're not gonna rank you at all. And that ends up being the biggest and most common mistake I see uh, e-commerce people do. And the next one after that is gonna be poor navigation. But really, like, we're gonna be, like if you have one thing that you wanna improve on, usually it's gonna be the, the content on your individual item pages. Well, I think that's a really great point because many, because you can have a lot of SKUs and it t does take a lot of work. But you can actually, with most e-commerce systems these days, you could probably download your whole entire catalog into yeah. one um, one Excel file and basically have a professional like Eric go through and create unique content specifically to that. Because I certainly noticed as we've moved away from, from those, those problems, Panda and Penguin, you know, getting original content has dramatically increase the search engine rankings on a page by page basis. I, I, I love how you said that, but it, it's really funny. Um, that whole feature, that feature you're talking about is the best thing in the world. And it's also the worst because I know people that do drop shipping and what they do is they get that, they get like an Excel file from their, from their drop shipper and they're like, Oh, well I could drop ship 1200 items right here. And then they import it into their e-commerce store and then voila, they have 1200 products like listed instantly. So, your biggest tool where you could actually go in and edit, mass edit like that, could also be your worst enemy if you're not using it properly. So the real way, like what I really teach and what I show, actually I don't go in and change the words for you, but I'll help, I help people find a team and work, that, work it out so they can. Usually the best thing to do is if you do have thin content, you only have like two or three lines, or you, don't even, or you have like not original text or whichever, um, I recommend people hire a team. And a lot of times, a team doesn't have to cost much. You just need some a team of writers. And a lot of times, 
what I recommend is get people in your community, get people that are local because they're going to know their products. So if you're if you have your physical products, get people from you know they could be from universities, it could be all over the place, and you get you do a blitz for like one week where you get four or five people and everyone goes through like four or five descriptions, and then you could just basically you know pump it out. And sometimes when they're all live, all there, everyone's writing, you could go through a thousand items in really short amount of time, and you know it'll cost you what five hundred, a thousand dollars for all the staff and the manpower, but then. You're set for the next five years because those product descriptions are set and they're written. Um, as a little added bonus, just kind of like something to throw in to make more money, is if those people have any background in copywriting, um, that's really something that's going to sell because the difference between selling an item is often the words on the page. So if those people that are writing the descriptions know how to sell and what triggers people and what motivates them, your e-commerce store is just going to sell that much more because the stuff that's written on the page will sell the item. So it's not just enough to just throw it up for Google. You want to sell at the same time. So it's kind of like a two-fold effect where you do a bit of one, you do a bit of both, you get great results, but you have to do the work. Yeah. And while you're going through your catalog, you might as well get some better pictures, get some unique pictures, oh, yeah, make, yeah. Make, make sure you tag those pictures, name them properly, create great alt tags with them. And then if, you want, if you're feeling a little uh, extra, add some videos to each product. Yeah. And then well, that, it really connects the dots that, all the way. That's actually going to be, that is going to be definitely the, the biggest mistake I see is people use the manufacturer's uh, pictures too. And because, you know, you have 400 items, you're like, oh, well, the this manufacturer went through the effort of taking professional pictures. I'll just use those. But what Google, if you go in Google image search, you'll, you, Google knows which images are similar and which images are duplicate. And the problem is, is Google looks for the original content. So if you have, um, let's say we're going to use our fishing pole example here. If you have five or 10 pictures on your page of fishing poles of the, the base hunter 4000, or let's just put it that way. Then when Google scans your page and say, okay, well, we've seen this picture, seen this, seen this picture. Oh, this guy has 10 pictures. So they assign a lot more quality and value to your page as opposed to the other guy who only has one picture that everyone else has. And Matt Cutts actually came in. This is a little interesting if you know Matt Cutts. He came in and he's very politically correct. And he's always slightly misleading but still tells the truth but slightly misleading. People ask if duplicate images would penalize a site. And the way he answers, he answers in a very specific way where he says, well, if you have duplicate pictures, it won't penalize your site, but you should probably get good ones. See, that's the thing. It, they, they won't come with like a penalty hammer, but they won't rank you. So, you know, whether you, don't, you get penalized or you don't rank, I'd, you know, it, it comes out to the same thing. So you need to be, you want to be ranking number one and the way to be ranking number one is going to be with the original pictures. So... I don't know where we're going with that, but I just wanted to throw that in and mention it. It's, it's important stuff. Most of the time we do photo shoots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that certainly leads into my next question. With so many e-commerce sites out there and there's big ones and there's Amazon, how could a small business e-commerce store really stand out in the rankings? Okay, well, I love Amazon as an example because Amazon is doing almost everything right. Uh, in fact, Google they have a very close relationship with Google. So when Google's creating the algorithm, they're basing it on, does it work with Amazon? So if Google makes an algorithm and then Amazon tanks and Amazon's not listed, that means that the engineer that's writing that algorithm is not doing his job properly. It's it's kind of like the reverse where most people try to rank for Google. Well, Google writes their al algorithm and they look and they're, okay, is it working with Amazon? So one of the things that Amazon's doing really well is going to be that they have a lot of original and main content. I guess the theme for this, but what they what counts is the stuff that's on their page, such as customers that view this item have also viewed this other thing. Customers that have bought this have also bought this other thing. Similar items, and then they have all the user reviews. And user reviews are excellent because first of all, they're original content talking about that. But on top of that, there are reviews, and they just make that page look huge, which is amazing. And therefore, if you want to compete with Amazon, the way to do it is really um, you shouldn't be selling as many items as Amazon. I don't even think that's possible. So you should be the expert on whatever you're selling and you're going to be able to bring more to the table than Amazon. So that's step one, first of all. 
you need to have at least the same amount of content as Amazon presents on the page. And if you have a store, you could do that. I mean, you could do you could do double the amount of content that Amazon does. It just takes a bit more time. And once you have that, then you need to get community links because Amazon has links from all over the place. And what Google really looks for is going to be related links coming into your website. So if we do, if you're very involved in your industry, your community, and you're doing like uh, you're sending out products to be reviewed to blogs, so let's say phishing blogs, and you're providing coupons to phishing sites and you know organizations, and you're on phishing forums, then your site is going to get a massive amount of very related links, while Amazon is going to get general links. So if you have equal or better on page in Amazon, so full description, reviews, really cover everything, have pictures, and then you get all the relevant uh, community links back pointing back to you, your store is going to actually outrank Amazon. And I've seen it done many times. Hmm. So now with the, the end of the year coming up, I'm, I know I'm working on a lot of e-commerce conversion optimization to really yeah. set up that, you know, get the, the, the most opt-ins during the holiday rush and also obviously the best sales. Mm -hmm. But in the search engine aspect, what would you recommend to e-commerce owners to set their, their sites up for the holidays? Okay. Well, it's a really good question. And the thing that you want to do is you want to see where your traffic is at and you want to take like, holidays. We have a bit of time. So what you want to do is really figure out where what what needs to be plugged what needs to be balanced if you're miss, if you're on page your descriptions are already really good perfect now you need links what i would do is i would hire some guy i would hire a marketing guy or have your marketing guy learn seo or get a bit of seo background and make him outreach to other sites and other uh, people for backlinks cuz most e-commerce stores don't have enough high quality backlinks so some of the really I guess Ninja, the really cool places you should be getting backlinks from, the strong ones, are first of all from your manufacturer. So if, it, if you're selling something, likely it's coming from somewhere, it's coming from a manufacturer. And these guys have usually like PR6, PR7 uh, in terms of that's how powerful the site is. Usually they have huge sites and they have a reseller section. So it's like, you know, distributed across Canada, United States. And you could be, just by asking them, you could be on their site and you get a direct do follow link back to your website. So manufacturers is going to be a place you want to do. Your marketing guy or if you're doing your SEO yourself, you should be sending items for review to community sites. That's going to be another excellent site place for links. Um, big bloggers, uh, review sites, you should be sending as much stuff and don't think of it as, oh, I'm going to lose all this money. It's really it's an investment because when they link back to you, not only are you going to get direct traffic, people are going to find you even more, but you're also going to get a lot of backlinks that's going to secure your place in the marketplace. So for the holidays, honestly, if I were to do, you know, two things, if my if my descriptions were and my product pages needed work, I would hire a team and do a one week blitz. Otherwise, if assuming that's fine, that what you really need to do is get really involved in the community and start um, sponsoring forums, sending re products for reviews, and you're going to get a lot more that you send out. That's for sure. It's some great advice there, and I can actually follow up because I, uh, I don't do the, the sales for my e-commerce clients, but I do recommend that they go out and they find blogs in their niche because sometimes it can be hard to get blogs to review your stuff. So yeah. you can buy advertising from them too, oh, yeah. sure. and you know that advertising can simply be a banner or a text link on their site, and that's really a backlink because there's no redirect on it. So you know, reach out and find people in your niche uh, for sure. Also, if if you create um, great videos, they may want to share those videos and link them back to your site as well. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, before we close out, I did um, find that canonical URLs, having those meta tags are really important for, for e-commerce as well. Oh, yeah. is, is that still the case? Oh, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it's kind of like an advanced question. Yeah, for sure. Most webmasters and business owners should be aware of this but you probably don't need to worry about it because in theory, the person that created the theme, the created person that created the website, inside the code, what they need to be using is rel canonical. And that's gonna be pointing to one specific location of an item and that tells Google that you have, that you don't have duplicate content across your entire site. You're not just repeating the same thing over and it points to the right place. So that is gonna be one of the things that your theme should have and if it doesn't, you're going to run into issues that you're going to need to resolve. Um, you, but in theory, uh, what you could do to check is you 
if you load up your, um, yeah, this is an easy way to check is if you load up the web page, you go into view source and just type in canonical uh, and with the find. And if it finds it and there's a tag, it's likely that the webmaster, uh, the uh, designer took care of that tag. If, however, it's not there, then you need to get someone to put the, the tag there. So whenever Google crawls your website, because it's going to find things. It's going to find um, your items in a bunch of different places on your site in different directories and different and so forth, and it's going to think that you're trying to spam the web. So that tag is extremely, extremely important. Um, but most of the time, like I said, I don't want to alarm anyone. It's likely that you have it and you can check by just viewing the source. Yeah, it's a little bit of an advanced technical aspect, but it's more than likely if you're running an e-commerce site, you know what we're talking about. And if you're not, yeah. just, just reach, out, reach out to me and I can help you answer any questions. For sure. As, as we close out, I, I did want to bring up how SEO and conversion, you know, kind of work together because converting from natural search is a lot different than converting from pay-per-click search. Yeah. How do you see them kind of working hand in hand? All right. Well, it's a, it's a really good question and they don't have to be exclusive. You see, Google's objective in life, what they want the most is to show the best website, right? And what your users will also want is to arrive on the best website. And if they arrive on the best website, they're more likely to buy. So there's like two things that I really recommend. Uh, one of them is really going to be some to have kick-ass uh, dynamic navigation. So what I mean by dynamic navigation is if you're, let's say you have a, a site and you dig into a directory, then you get sub listings on the side. So for instance, let's say you go on Amazon's DVD section. Well, when you're in the DVD section, the sidebar is now comedies, it's going to be drama, it's going to be action movies, it's going to be all that type of stuff. And it's not like a static just DVD section. You get to dig in more and more. Google absolutely goes apeshit over that. They love it. So um, you're going to rank better and people are going to buy more. Another little trick that I have, and this is going to be my, my little like spice that I really love to use, is when I'm writing the product descriptions, what I always do is I recommend cross products. So I cross recommend other products within my description. So if you're right, and what that does, and I link to them. So what that does is it, it gives you internal links that Google absolutely loves. You rank higher for the ter those terms and people end up buying one or two things. So if you're taking, talking about a fishing pole, like fishing pole, this, 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 inside you say, this fishing pole works best with these fishing hooks that you could buy here. And it also fits really well in this travel pack and you have the travel fishing pole travel pack and you have the anchor text inside your description. What that does is it creates a more complete listing. You rank higher and people likely buy the bundle. They'll buy this, then they'll go, oh yeah, you recommend this too? Okay, I'll buy this. And then they end up buying three, four items when in reality they're only looking for one. So it's win, win, win uh, all, all across the board right there. Yeah, that's a, a great way to increase your average order value. Yeah. Uh, sell, sell bundles, recommend other products, cross promote. Um, also, just one other ninja trick that I, I certainly recommend is when you when you are setting up your category pages and you have that faceted search. That's what we talked about on the left side to be able to kind of narrow down. After you have a certain uh, grouping of a uh, filtering of items, you can use those as landing pages. It's, you know, you, you buy direct uh, ads for, you know, someone's searching a fishing pole. It's a fly fishing pole this long. And all of a sudden you send them to a page that just fills all that need. Great conversion aspect right there. One, that's, that's a question I get a lot very from an SEO's perspective. They're like, where do I build links to? And a lot of times the best place to build links to is going to be that category pages. So your landing pages that you could use. When you had the whole list, you're like, well, where do I point the links to my thing. Well, I point them to the main directory where you're listing all the products. That's usually the category pages. If you put a nice little header on top, oh, it's delicious and you rank so well. <laughs> uh, it, it's good when you get all these things really working well because that's where you yeah. really make the big money. And uh, Eric knows what he's talking about here because I saw him, uh, his talks on his YouTube channel and he is an expert in really the recovery aspect and all things SEO. So let, let's let's close by telling people how they can find out more about you. Well, what do you do with your business? Uh, the floor is all yours. All right. Well, um, really quickly, I do have a flow chart that I just want to give to anyone listening. If they want, go to uh, – it's a flow chart that's going to help you if you have any traffic loss with your with your company. And I also have – a full free e-commerce SEO course that I give out. So I just really, I think, I think a six or seven part has all my best stuff, free e-commerce course and a free flow chart. 
um, for determining any traffic loss. It's all at profit, so P R A W F I T slash SEO bonus dot uh, com slash SEO bonus. So profit uh, P R A W F I T dot com slash SEO bonus. And right there, they're gonna get access to my whole like uh, SEO course uh, on e-commerce, and they also get a free flowchart. And if they have any problems with Panda or Penguin, my website is pandabreakthrough.com. I've been helping people for the past three, four years on SEO that have tr suffered traffic losses. So that's my contact information, and I'm I'm happy to you know it's my life's mission, I guess, right now to help business owners that have uh, traffic problems. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Sweet. I, I, I'll probably come back to you and ask you more questions as well. Yeah. I really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks, thanks a lot for having me. It was, it was great. It was a pleasure. Thank you for watching the Marketing Optimization Podcast with Alex Designs. Please remember to subscribe to all of the videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you.